Now, 50 years ago today, music fans from across the country descended on Newquay in Cornwall for the first ever Radio 1 Roadshow. The event took the radio station out of a studio and on tour and went on to become a major part of British pop culture. It paved the way for major summer festivals as we know them today. Let's remind ourselves of where it all began. The Radio 1 Roadshow. Today, live from Morecambe Leisure Park. Wonderful! Oh, congratulations! He likes me. He likes me. Thanks, Pete. And hi, welcome to Lime Regis. John is now going to pour the bucket of water over Jane Onra. <laughs> I know. Wonder that's bigger than the usual medallion you wear. Yeah, it's the biggest medallion I've ever received in my life. Thank you very much. That'll bring back a lot of memories for a lot of people there, and uh, including who we're joined by now, Tony Miles, otherwise known as Smiley Miley, who was part of the roadshow from the very beginning, alongside radio DJ Alex James, who joins us in the studio. Good morning to you morning, both. Guys. Now, I have to start with you, Tony. That must bring back morning. some memories. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it brings back 50 years today. We were on Bristol Beach in Newquay, um, and a legendary Radio 1 roadshow was born. Um a lot of the appeal was actually people seeing their favourite DJs in person for the first time. What was it like for you seeing your listeners gathered in such big numbers on those roadshows? Well, for me, um, I was a, an, uh, I was an ex-motor trader, a young 26-year-old rookie, so I had no idea what was what was about to happen. But you know, Ron, you know, the DJs coming out of the studio and going to meet uh, their listeners. You know, the DJs then were as big as the artist because they were seen on top of the pops. They were big, big, big stars. And Alex, I'm going to bring you in now because you were just mentioning to me a moment ago about how this was uh, something that brought back childhood memories. And you've seen some footage of your experiences back then. Yeah, I was chatting to my big brother about this last night and he'd managed to find one of the roadshows that we went to on YouTube. And I didn't realise that content was online. But like Tony said, for, I was a proper radio nerd growing up and, and still am. Um, and so the idea of being able to get out there and be part of like the Radio 1 experience as a kid during your summer holidays was absolutely crazy. Being able not only to see the artists that Radio 1 put on stage to perform, but also, as Tony says, you know, the DJs were like rock stars to people who were into radio. No access to these people through social media like you would have now. So being able to see them in the flesh was just brilliant. And, and Tony, I just wonder, I, I remember going to, I don't think it was a Radio 1 roadshow, but I went to a roadshow when I was, uh, when I was at school. I remember the excitement. Where'd you go? It was the Capital, Capital Roadshow, and they brought it okay. to Romford. I remember the excitement of being there. Chris Tarrant was the breakfast show DJ at the time. And the thing that struck me was, because you heard all the other the voices as part of the show, I remember thinking, gosh, they don't look like I'd have expected them to look. Did people say that to you when they saw you in person? No, not really. It's, oh, it's uh, just me. You know, what you can remember, <laughs> remember is, you know, from Capital to all the other radio stations, that the roadshow didn't exist to 73. And, and Radio 1 was groundbreaking when they decided that they wanted to take, take the broadcast, national radio, out on the road. It was groundbreaking. The word of roadshow didn't even exist. You know, uh, and for us then, from my brother and myself who supplied the roadshow vehicle, um, to actually take it out and and put it on a beach or or a promenade, uh, it was groundbreaking. Uh, and the roadshow was the biggest uh, radio OB um, live in the world. 
And Tony, we've got to talk about the merchandise because those T-shirts yeah. were so popular, weren't they? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I think my, bro my brother, uh, John, John Miles and myself, um, we had the exclusive license from 74 right up to 1995. And we produced about 100 items and we produced the Radio 1 Goodie Mobile. We had Radio 1 Offers, PO Box 247, Porter Z. Um, we did Radio 1 calendars, we had T-shirts, mugs, stickers, and I've just launched now, um, in recognition of 50 years of the Radio 1 Roadshow, um, T-shirts, uh, mugs, sweatshirts, and they'll all be on eBay in the next couple mm. of hours after I finish talking to you guys. Tony, you've got the, the anniversary uh, merchandise on display there. People have uh, been sending their pictures of the original stash that they bought. They're going to share yes, some of them I mean, uh, with you this morning. Uh, this is Bruce with his signed Smiley Miley Radio 1 Roadshow board game. He says it was the highlight of his year. And uh, this leaflet is from Mark in Birmingham, who says he picked it up in the 80s when he was a teenager. Incredible, Lee, I've said there. Indeed. Uh, Jackie's been in touch as well and sent us this picture of her in a T-shirt from the Roadshow. She was quite the fan, she said. She went to the events in Newquay, Weymouth, Lyme Regis and Swansea. And this is Simon Sainsbury and his friend Woody at a road show in St Austell in the early 80s. And Simon says he and his friends drove down to Cornwall from Essex and ended up in St Austell, not realising the Radio 1 road show was in town. And uh, we've got one more. He also sent this picture of Steve Wright and his friend Jacko. He says they were doing impersonations of David <laughs> Attenborough together. Perhaps uh, not... Fully conveyed in the photo, <laughs> but uh, oh, happy memories And there. thank you so much for sending all of those pictures in. And finally, Alex, how much did this inspire you as uh, an aspiring DJ and uh, influence how music events around the country were developed? Yeah, I mean, the legacy of the Roadshow is really interesting because every radio station I've worked on has in some way kind of replicated the event, uh, whether that's kind of arena gigs, Christmas light switch-ons. And it's all about kind of giving listeners the opportunity to see the artists that they hear on the radio live. Um, but I think it also brings a sense of community together. And that was the thing about the Radio 1 Roadshow. Even if you couldn't be there, you listened to the broadcast and felt like you were part of something special. Um, and even now, the radio station I work on, XS Manchester, we still are putting on small gigs for specifically for listeners. Uh, so they can see new artists and discover new music. Oh, well, thank you so much, Alex, Pleasure. for coming in. Alex James and Tony Miles for joining us. Thank you both for your time. I just say, thank you to you both. Guys, just before, oh. before you go, guys. We're, going, we're, we're about to hit the top of the hour, Tony. You understand that of all people. <laughs> thank you very much. We're going to have to say goodbye. That's all from us uh, this morning. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye -bye. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.